any homeopath. It's well known. Put dishes of germinating seeds inside aluminum foil, they're going to die. Put water in an aluminum cup, you don't want to drink it. It's really that serious. Look at the health statistics of aluminum foil factories. This is not good stuff. It has to do with the physics of the amperage they use in the electric field to push the bauxite into aluminum. It's called misqualified energy. In technical physical terms, it means that the harmonics that are then contained in the field effect made by that molecule, the bauxite in pain in the aluminum, the allium is not evil, but when the the wave has been pushed into the aluminum with so much electric heat to make the aluminum in a factory, the molecules are literally out of phase electrically with everything alive. So the electric field of aluminum is literally, measurably, and physically poisonous to everything alive. So we even can get a definition of evil, which George Bush desperately needs. He needs to understand. <laughs> but the definition of evil is a wave that fails to nest or embed in biology. So as a physicist, as an electrical engineer, in terms of defining what electric fields serve biology, I can tell you from pure physics that aluminum is evil. <laughs> Sounds like I'm religious about this, doesn't it? But you get the flavor. So this is an example of our terror. Now, obviously, we can't afford gold and palladium for all of our buildings, so we look at other materials. It turns out that very high on the scale, say if stone is paramagnetic and piezoelectric stones like cal cal uh, calcium-based stone, limestones, and your granite, and uh, your bol uh, basalt, uh, these stones are highly piezoelectric, highly paramagnetic. Paramagnetic means it will treat the electric field like a lens and organize it. That's good. So paramagnetic stone is good. Dimagnetic is stone that breaks up magnetic fields like a sieve, like a strainer. That's called fractionation as opposed to fractality. So dimagnetic stone, like sandstone for example, is not so good. So you make that as a graph and you say, Fractal or non-fractal? Talk about stone, you can talk about wood, for example. In wood, the closer the grain, the hardwoods, and trace mineral content, is very good. The, the softwoods are not quite so good, but they're still a lot better than the, most of the metals. And then you have the fabrics. In the fabrics, the fabrics that have happy DNA, and then we define happy DNA in terms of access to genetic diversity, hemp and even wool and cotton, etc. These are make a magnetic field that is useful to biology. Whereas your polyester and your plastic, the electric field is poisonous to everything alive because they prevent the charge field from breathing. Just put on a polyester sweater for 10 minutes. You feel like shit, basically. The physics is because that electric field of that plastic in your garment is preventing the charge envelope of your body from radiating capacitance efficiently. Just like you know, if you step into a metal building, you feel like shit. If you, if you step into a sacred stone circle of ancient trees and stones, you feel like your auric and gone back and you feel wonderful. That's frac fractality versus fractionation. So we can understand and make a chart for architects based on living materials. So perhaps that also explains some of the uh, psychological attraction that people have to places of high fractality, like Stonehenge, Exactly. Is one example that you've given. Mm -hmm. Machu Picchu is also one. Is that correct? Maybe there's a few others exactly. places that have physical beauty, but also have the physics and the science are such that people are attracted to go there for reasons other than just seeing it. That's precisely the point. Thank you. That what's really attracting people is the fact that their biology can thrive. So if we as scientists can define sacred space electrically as a place that nourishes biology electrically, we could then invent sacred architecture, and that's why we're here. And this sec in this section, we wanted to present examples. We mentioned Stonehenge. Stonehenge is concentric rings of paramagnetic piezoelectric stone that's compressing charge. Animals want to go to the center. So it doesn't mean that everybody on planet Earth has to worship Stonehenge. You know, the gods must be crazy. Let's worship a Coke bottle. No! It means we understand the principle and we build it for ourselves. That's what Stonehenge is about, teaching us the principle. Stop worshiping the Coke bottles and build it. <laughs> so once we understand that, we can then understand the Amarna complex, which later was related to the Solomon's Temple mythology. 
or the Machu Picchu. These are examples of what's called solar.